Is ADHD really as common as, ooh, shiny. Ooh, guys, can I play? Hey guys, Amy focusing really hard today on D News to talk about ADHD, properly known as Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. ADHD is, by all accounts, on the rise. In 2011, 6.4 million school children were diagnosed with ADHD in the United States, a 42% increase since 2004. But is it a true rise, or are we just so much more aware of ADHD that we're diagnosing kids with it when really they're just super energetic? The Center for Disease Control and Prevention recently surveyed 2,976 families to take a close look at how children came to be diagnosed as ADHD. And it turns out that while most diagnoses follow the American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines, there were a striking number of instances where the guidelines weren't followed. The AAP stipulates that information ultimately leading to an ADHD diagnosis be taken from multiple sources in a child's life covering a variety of settings. That means a teacher, a piano instructor, and a sports coach. If the piano instructor is the only one giving evidence of poor attention, the kid might not be ADHD. He just might not want to play music. The CDC survey found that in 18% of cases, the diagnosis of ADHD was done solely on the basis of family members reporting, which is inconsistent with AAP recommendations. And because these diagnoses weren't following the right methods, one out of every 10 children was diagnosed without the use of a behavior rating scale that is supposed to be administered. The study also shows that children are getting diagnosed at an earlier age. Roughly half of ADHD cases are found in children age 6 or younger, 17.1% at age 6, 14.6% at age 5, and 16% of cases at age four or younger. But aren't kids supposed to be energetic and excited to discover the world? What's really the difference between being hyper and having ADHD? The core symptoms of ADHD include inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. Difficulties with concentration, mental focus, and the inhibition of impulses all impair daily functions. In children, ADHD is typically identified when they get into a structured setting like school, and it's a lot more than just running around with boundless energy. A child who becomes easily frustrated and overwhelmed, has trouble managing their emotions, and struggles to organize, plan, pay attention, and can't remember details is far likelier to be ADHD than just the victim of sugar cereal for breakfast. And really, children are just more energetic than adults, something evolutionary biologist Michael Rose from the University of California, Irvine says is an evolutionary thing. Children are excited to learn about the world around them, both their environments and the people within them. Playing and running around helps a child's brain develop. Parents, meanwhile, stand by as guardians, making sure that developmental play doesn't stray too close to traffic. As children age, they start to learn about the risks this kind of playful behavior brings with it, and they slow down, not because they're less excited, but because as they near adulthood they gain a sense of self-preservation. So the rise of ADHD cases could be a case of overdiagnosing excited children mixed with parental concern. There are a lot of other things that could be affecting a child's manners. Trace talks about the effects of adrenaline in the body here. Adrenaline is why your hands shake when you're nervous, your muscles are all a quiver with excess energy. And the blood pumping in your ears? That's adrenaline's fault too. Adrenaline is also called epinephrine, and it can make us do some amazing things. We'll have a link in the description if you're on mobile. So what do you guys think? Do you sometimes have trouble focusing? Let us know your experiences in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more D News every day of the week.